Howdy there, I am back. Uh, whether this comes out before or after my Globes predictions video, I'm not sure, because uh, I'm filming them at the same time. But uh, yeah, the shirt change isn't going to fool anybody. Uh, but yeah, I am here now to predict the Screen Actors Guild nominations, which are dropping. I don't know exactly what time, but they're dropping in a few days, just like the Golden Globes winners. So this I'm really looking forward to, to give us a bit of clarity on some of the major acting races, because the SAG, I think, has the highest crossover with the Academy uh, in terms of amount of voters that are in both bodies. So uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting. I've gone maybe a little more left field with some of these than I have with the Globes winners. But uh, you know, the SAG, how do I define the SAG? They're made up of actors, so they like big names. I wouldn't say they hinge on big names as much as the Oscar, uh, the Globes do, but they do like big names. They like respected actors, but they also like maybe actors, actors who aren't as known in the mainstream, but are respected by other actors. So um, a lot to factor in here in terms of that and other uh, factors like the BAFTA long list and everything. So uh, I've given it my best shot with these. And uh, apologize if there is a whirring noise in the mic. Uh, I have a fan on. It is very, very hot here. We'll start with Stunt Ensemble. Uh, not really important or relevant for predictions, but I'm just glad it's a category. I think Top Gun Maverick wins this. Why wouldn't it? Everything Everywhere I Have Second, that film has a really great stunt team. Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, they like to go with the Marvel stuff. Uh, and I think the first one won this award. The Woman King, uh, similar to Black Panther, just has a great stunts and a great ensemble. And uh, the Batman I've thrown in there because it's one of the, like the good movies with action this year. And then uh, Doctor Strange, Bullet Train, 13 Lives. I don't, I don't really see like Black Adam or anything else below that uh, getting in. Okay, now to the categories that are actually uh, kind of relevant for our predictions. But uh, supporting actor... Uh, Ki Hoi Kwan, I've made it pretty clear that I think he's sweeping, and uh, I'll be shocked if he doesn't get in here. Brendan Gleeson, I think, is equally safe for the nomination. Now, Barry Keown, I've noticed that a lot of people think he's not getting in here. Uh, he's actually outside the top five on Gold Derby, which is really surprising to me because we all said he wasn't going to get in at the Globes, and then he did. And I feel like the Sags are probably even more likely to go for him than the Globes. I know he's not a big name, but he's a guy who's been building a really solid resume over the last five or six years. And I think Banshees alone has put him on the radar enough over this last few months to people to not only vote for him, but maybe even vote for him over his co-star, Brendan Gleeson. There are a lot of people who have come out saying they like Keon even more. So look, I could be wrong. There might be something I don't know, but uh, I really do think he's getting in, especially considering no one else below him is on any kind of solid ground for a nomination. The next two are really just a blind throw at the dartboard because there are probably eight names, nine at a push, who could get in. Uh, the two I have in right now are Paul Dano for The Fablemans and Eddie Redmayne for The Good Nurse. Dano... The Faye Woman's boys are really tricky because they neither of them made the BAFTA long list. They both got in at Critics' Choice. Neither of them got in at Globes. If history is to be suggested, I feel like one can get in. I don't think there's any way both get in at the Oscars. Uh, and SAG, hopefully, is where we start to figure out who that one is. Or it could be neither of them, and then where are we going to be? I don't know. But I've gone with Paul Dano because... It's just starting to seem like he's the one. I think he's the best performance in the film. Uh, he is a guy who is really beloved and respected, and he's a guy who there's an air about him being overdue for just a nomination. So I've gone with him. And then the fifth spot, I've thrown in Eddie Redmayne for The Good Nurse. I've been saying, when I saw the film, I said it's a lone SAG nom. He got that Globe nom, but... In lieu of me not having faith in any of these other contenders, um, the SAG do like they do like to do an, a left like a Kate Blanchett Nightmare Alley type nomination. Um, he is really good in it. I think it's one of his best performances. Uh, so Eddie Redmayne's who have gotten my five, but not with a great deal of confidence. I know a lot of people are predicting Brad Pitt. I don't really see it here. But people might just say, I don't care about the the allegations or I, I don't care about how much we don't really like Babylon above the line. But um, I just, I, I'm not sold on Brad Pitt. And then Brian Tyree Hemray for Causeway, I nearly put in here because he is like a really respected actor who's just not really known 
as much in the mainstream. Uh, I just don't quite have the balls to put him in the five just yet. Uh, Judd Hirsch easily could get in. He could take Dano's spot or they could both be fourth and fifth. So I think you'd be pretty okay predicting any of those guys, anyone up to that eighth spot. Tom Hanks, I'm starting to get a little nervous about because he made the BAFTA long list where a lot of people didn't. Um, that might just be because the BAFTAs loved Elvis, but it's something something to be a little nervous about. And there's a couple other things I'm nervous that the SAGs might do. Uh, ben Wishaw, Women Talking, made that BAFTA long list despite none of his female co-stars, but it does feel like he's kind of dead in the water. And then I've just got two movie star picks down the bottom here. Woody Harrelson for Triangle of Sadness made the BAFTA long list and he's very beloved and he feels like someone the SAG would like if they like the movie, but he probably wouldn't go alone. Dolly De Leon would probably have to go with him. Uh, Miles Teller, I've also thrown in as like, again, they like to sometimes do a very uh, out of left field one. And uh, if they really like Top Gun, maybe uh, they decide to throw him a bone. Uh, also, I forgot, I forgot Mark Rylance for Bones and All. Let me throw, I'm going to put Rylance in... I mean, he would have been there the whole time I've been talking, but I forgot to have him on my list. He's another left field one that they might go for, but he's been a guy we've been waiting for pop up somewhere. He's one of my favorites. I don't really see it here, but, uh, you know, he's on the list. Ah, uh, the dreaded supporting actress category. Um, I'm confident in the first three. I'm confident in Kerry Condon, Jamie Lee Curtis, and Angela Bassett. I think you could make a case for Angela Bassett winning the SAG. In fact, I probably should have her at two over three, but I can't be bothered changing it. Uh, Janelle Monae for Glass Onion feels like if she's getting in anywhere, it's gonna be here. And then the fifth spot is the one I'd really like to talk about. Um, I, I'm, I'm going out on a limb and I'm saying that SAG are going to revive Hong Chow, who early on, some people thought could win. We're saying she's phenomenal in the whale. Um, then people didn't like the whale and she just didn't get in anywhere. She just made the BAFTA long list over some of these other people I have here. So let's bring up the whole list. Uh, Sue didn't make BAFTA. Buckley didn't make BAFTA. Uh, neither did Claire Foy. Um, that's not to say this is some huge revelation, but SAG nominated Hong Chow for downsizing when she didn't quite make it to the Oscars. And last year when Jesse Buckley did make it to the Oscars, SAG didn't nominate her for The Lost Daughter. So I think it's clear they like Chow. She's enough of a name for them. And I haven't seen The Whale, but by all reports, it, it is her career best performance. So I'm going out on a limb and saying they bring her back. And I'm not saying this culminates in an Oscar nomination, but... I think that she probably enters the conversation a little more than she has been. Uh, Stephanie Sue and Kerry Mulligan, equally good options. I know a lot of people think that fifth spot is going to be Stephanie Sue, but she's not really a name and she hasn't really been getting the consistent accolades that someone like Barry Keown has been getting to warrant her name being at the forefront of voters' minds, which is so dumb. She should be in there. She's She'd be number one for me. Uh, Mulligan, it's really hard to read where she's at. She's definitely a name, but it seems to be almost random whether she's popping up for nominations or not. Uh, Buckley could still get the Oscar nom at the end of the day, but Women Talking feels like it is hanging on by a thread. And if she doesn't get in here, it's starting to look really hard for her with only Critics' Choice to her name. Dolly DeLeon, I still think, could get the Oscar nom and the BAFTA but she's not getting in here, I don't think. Claire Foy, kind of in the same boat as Jesse Buckley. And then my last one's just a weird pick, Kate Hudson for Glass Onion. That just feels like something SAG would do. I don't think it's likely, but I'm just throwing it out there into the void, you know? Lead actor, I've gone pretty simple for this one. Now, the order doesn't necessarily reflect who I think is going to win. It just reflects who I think is most likely for a nomination. So Farrell and Butler, locks. Frasier, pretty much a lock. Uh, Bill Nye for Living, I've got next. Now, maybe SAG won't go for him as much as other bodies, but I don't think they're too exclusive. Like, I don't think they're that biased towards Americans or anything, so I don't see why that would hurt Bill Nye. And then I've gone Tom Cruise. If Cruise is getting in anywhere, it's here. And if he doesn't get in here, uh, I'll be a little worried about his Oscar chances. Six, I've got Hugh Jackman for The Sun. I don't think he's getting the Oscar, but he could get in here. And then Paul Mescal for After Sun. His stocks are really rising. I do kind of hold out that maybe if Cruz falls by the wayside, Mescal could be the one who takes that Oscar spot. We'll see how that film does at Critics' Choice and BAFTA. Um... 
but I don't think he's getting in here. Jeremy Pope for the inspection. It might just be Globes and Dunn here. Diego Calva for Babylon. The film's on the radar, but he's just not quite getting in there. Uh, and then I've just got a few couple celebrity picks. Daniel Kaluuya for Nope, Adam Driver for White Noise, and Gabriel LaBelle for The Feldman. It's not a celebrity pick, but a performance that people love. But I'll be surprised if anyone out of that, like, top... Honestly, I'm pretty confident in that top five. Like, more than any other one here. Lead actress is starting to look like we've got this leading pack of six, and there's one that we need to cut. So Michelle Yeoh and Blanchett locks. Michelle Williams definitely gets in here. Viola Davis, while she might not make the Oscar, I really think she will get in here. I mean, who's more respected among actors than Viola Davis? And then I've got Danielle Debwala for Till in that fifth spot, because I think that performance just has is going to have enough juice to get in. Uh, the one I have narrowly missing is Margot Robbie for Babylon. Um, she just doesn't feel as locked in as a lot of these other people. And she missed the BAFTA long list, which was a surprise. The one I want you to watch out for is Anna de Armas for Blonde. I heard from a friend who talked to some voters who said that she played really, really well at SAG screenings. She made the BAFTA shortlist. She got the Globe nom. She could be a threat. I don't quite have the balls to predict her, but I think you could. I definitely think it's not out of the question that Anna de Armas gets that sag nom uh, and like Dad Weller messes out because she's not a big enough name. Again, I don't have the courage to do it, but if you want that left field prediction for yourself, Anna de Armas is the one, I think. Uh, Olivia Coleman and Power of Light, always a chance. Uh, Emma Thompson is someone who I think could just get that lone SAG nomination, which would be kind of fun. And the other names I don't think are likely, but Naomi Aki, Jessica Chastain, Mia Goth for Pearl is my like Emily Blunt quiet place horror random pick. And then Leslie Manville I've thrown in there too. But, uh, I think this is going to be limited to that top eight. Best film ensemble. If you'd ask me like a month or two ago, I'd have told you Women Talking was going to get in and probably win. Now I don't think it's getting nominated. Um, zero acting nominations and just I don't think it's really on the mark, sadly. I haven't seen it. I'm very excited to see it, but people just don't like it that much. Uh, Everything Everywhere All at Once I think wins this. I, I mean, I hope it wins this. Uh, Glass Onion, I think, is definitely getting in. I know the first one didn't, but the field isn't as strong this year, and people are really going gaga over this cast, even though I, I think I prefer the cast in the first one, but uh, it would still be a very deserving nominee. The Fablemans, while I don't think is winning, I think he's definitely getting in. There are a lot of people popping in and out, giving great performances. Benches of Inisherin, look, it could be that Power of the Dog movie that gets three, four acting nominations and doesn't make Ensemble because the main cast is limited to those four. But uh, I'm predicting it anyway because it's a top two Best Picture contender. And we're really learning that SAG Ensemble does have a big Best Picture correlation. Hence me having everything everywhere at number one. I've got The Woman King in here next. Uh, that And that's really the only non- Best Picture nom contender to uh, be in here. And I think that probably replaces Women Talking, which I just think people aren't going to care about enough. And it's got that Viola Davis nomination to, to carry it in. Six, I've got Top Gun Maverick. Uh, I still don't think this is an impossibility if they really love the film. And if they nominate Miles Teller, then you're sure. Um, and that could bode well for its Oscar Best Picture chances uh, if it gets in here, but I don't think it's super likely. Women Talking has the cast, has the names, has the performances, doesn't have the nominations on the board, and I don't think you can predict it. Babylon supposedly has a great ensemble, but no one really cares about it. Elvis, if they love it, you could, but really who is there outside of Butler and Hanks? Uh, Black Panther Wakanda Forever would be deserving, but I think it's just Bassett and Bassett alone. She said it has a, so many great people giving a single scene performance, but uh, awards voters this year do not care about movies about females vocalizing. Women talking, she said, people just are not about it, which is a damn shame. Triangle of Sadness would be awesome, but it doesn't feel likely. But uh, yeah, that's it. 
that is my SAG non predictions. Uh, I'm not super confident in them, but I think I've got a decent mixture of left field picks and popular picks. And uh, hopefully this provides you some fuel to help with your own predictions, whether you just want to say, yep, I'm going to go with what he went with. Or it's like, he didn't have this person in, but I really liked that point he made about Anna de Armas in Blonde being a really scary threat. And I'm going to predict her. Seriously, like I encourage people to predict her and I'll be really happy for you if you're right. Um, yeah, thank you for watching. Stay tuned. I'll be doing hopefully reactions to these and the Golden Globe winners sometime soon. Follow me on Instagram. Follow me on Letterboxd. Uh, Instagram's where I post everything movie related I'm doing. I'm currently counting down my top 100 favorite actors of all time, which has been a very fun experience. Those links are in the description. Have a wonderful day and uh, good luck with your awards predictions. Oh, and uh, I didn't do any updated Oscar predictions in December because there's just been so much other stuff going on. So I'll probably do a new edition after these and the Golden Globes drop.